Mr. Vice Chairman, will you lead us in the invocation, please? Yes. Stand, please. <clears throat> we pray for guidance in our decision making. We also pray for our leaders, military personnel, and EMT. Please guide us in all our duties. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Robert and Serpy. Here. Richard Donnelly. Roger Brunswick. Here. Barbara Craig. Here. Chairman Kurlander. Here. James Worcester. Here. Russ Wynn. Okay. Um, it's uh, time for uh, uh, the approval of the minutes of the uh, last meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? I'll make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's unanimous, uh, Madam Secretary. Uh, it's uh, time. Uh, now time in this meeting to have public comment. Anybody who wishes to make a statement or about the uh, matters before us, please come forward at this time. Hearing none, we'll call the case. Uh, we, uh, we will take the uh, item seven on the agenda after, but let's uh, have the uh, presentation of the case before us now. Mike Vigon, City Opening to Springs. Uh, as is customary with these zoning board hearings, the applicant's gonna go first. Representing the applicant is Banks Engineering and Stacy Hewitt. Before we get started, uh, Mr. Donnelly was here he had a conflict, mm -hmm. but he had a question uh, that he wanted to raise, and I would like to make it part of the record. He left something with me here. Go ahead and read. <coughs> Chairman Larry Kurlander, since I will not be able to attend the 19th of March 2019 meeting of the board, I pass on my thoughts to you on the application. My only concern relates to parking. The plans <coughs> show 15 <coughs> parking spaces proposed. Given an overnight manager who will probably have a car, employees of some number, service vehicles, some 42 peak hour vehicle trips, and that the applicant for, foresees his project creating 25 job related opportunities, will 15 proposed parking spaces be sufficient to serve the pro project? Interesting to note that if the billboard were to be removed, that an additional two parking spaces could be freed up. What is the status or future of the billboard? That was handed to me just prior to the start of the meeting, and I'm handing it over to the, uh, for the record. Thank you. You can proceed at this time. Um, will the witnesses be sworn in this we morning? In. We're gonna swear, we'll swear in anyone, anyone who's testifying at all. <coughs> Please stand and raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Proceed. Good morning. My name is Stacy Hewitt. I'm with Banks Engineering, and I'm the planner for this case. I have previously been accepted as an expert witness in land use planning and zoning in this forum, and I'd like to be accepted as such this morning. Do you have any questions? Do you I want no to questions. voir dire the uh, witness? No. Anybody? No. Proceed. Thank you. With us here this morning, we do have the applicant, Brian Franco. With Could you speak into the microphone, yeah. please? Yes. Um, we do have there the um, <laughs> the rep applicant's representative, um, American Pet Resort. We have Brian Franco here with us today um, for any questions. The site is located at 8725 and 8739 Commerce Drive. 
and before you is a request to rezone two contiguous parcels, approximately 1.55 acres, from Neighborhood Commercial CN2 and Light Industrial IL Zoning Districts to a commercial plan development to allow for a maximum of 17,400 square feet animal boarding and daycare facility, animal clinic, and other related and ancillary uses. <clears throat> the applicant team here today uh, with me, I have Ashley Knierum, an ecologist with Dex Bender and Associates. She is available for questions. Um, we also have Gregory Desario with David M. Jones and Associates, the landscape architect for the project, and he will be um, doing a brief presentation. We also have Brent Addison with Banks Engineering, the engineer for the project, that will be presenting briefly. And also for questions, we have Jim Banks, the transportation engineer on the project. The staff report recommends approval. Staff did a wonderful job outlining the request, and um, the applicant is in agreement with the conditions of approval as included in the staff report. And I would like to adopt the staff report and attachments as part of my testimony today. The site is located at the northeast corner of US 41 and Commerce Drive. It is approximately 0.38 miles south of Pelican Colony Boulevard and approximately 0.46 miles north of Old US 41 intersection. It's across from the Congo River Gulf. The future land use on the site is actually split down the center. The western half is general commercial and the eastern half is industrial, future land use. The zoning on the site, again, is split between commercial neighborhood and light <coughs> industrial. This is an aerial of the site demonstrating the surrounding development. A couple of things I'd like to point out is the existing frontage road that runs along US 41. There is a, an existing shopping center to the north that has the dead end of the frontage road and sidewalk into our site. To the east, there is a, it is a former recycling facility. There's the office um, location and then the open storage yard in the rear. Across the street, we have the Marble Works Industrial Center here. And across US 41, we have an office complex and the Congo River Golf. These are some pictures around the site, just demonstrating some of the adjacent uses. This is the adjacent um, old recycling area to the east of the site. Um, picture one is demonstrating the adjacent shopping center and the dead end um, frontage road that we will be extending. Picture two is again a picture So you're of extending that to the north? We're extending it to the south, down to Commerce Drive. Down to Commerce Drive. Correct. I see. And the picture two demonstrates the existing billboard and the sidewalk and the frontage road. And then picture three is just a view down Commerce Drive as it exists today. This is a, the environmental report that was included with the site, with the packages. The majority of the site is disturbed land invaded by exotics. Um, there's the eastern portion is Australian pine and the remainder is disturbed land. There was an environmental survey and no listed species were observed on the site. This is the master concept plan proposed for the site. Again, as discussed, we will be extending the f existing frontage road down to Commerce Drive, which then aligns to the existing access point across the street. And this layout has actually, to accommodate this connection for pedestrian flow as well as vehicular and bicycles, it has resulted in a deviation that I will be getting into as far as the US 41 overlay and the required 20 foot buffer along the front. In order to accommodate this connection with the roadway, it did require a deviation from that requirement. The site has um, been laid out for 
pedestrian connections to connect to the US 41 sidewalk and the sidewalk will be extended down Cor Commerce Drive as well as pedestrian movement throughout the site. One thing I would like to draw attention to is the amen required amenity zone that is part of the 41 overlay. We're re we'll be providing a bench with a trash receptacle, bike rack, and some canopy trees to provide shade in that area. The site plan also demonstrates the drop-off area and the proposed enclosed outdoor exercise facilities that are related with the request. The schedule of uses is very specific to the proposed use. It is minimal and staff is recommending approval of the schedule of uses. <coughs> With the property development regulations, there was one change requested by staff to limit the height of the building to 30 feet. We had originally requested 35 feet, but we are in agreement with the reduction to the 30 foot maximum building height. This is just a picture of the site plan demonstrating the dumpster enclosures. And these are some elevations of the proposed building. Some renderings are also included to demonstrate And with that, I'd like to um, lead into the deviation request. The first deviation is to deviate from Land Development Code Section 4-893B1, which requires a 20-foot US-41 buffer to allow an alternate better landscape betterment plan. There are physical constraints that prevent the site from providing this buffer, as previously discussed. The existing frontage road is only approximately eight feet from the property line and there is an existing six foot public utility and drainage easement as well that um, further limits the site. There's an existing sidewalk and driveway stub out that we will be extending to the south. The plan as proposed provides required vehicular and pedestrian interconnects and connectivity is a significant purpose of the US 41 overlay and the proposed landscape betterment plan exceeds the intent of the minimum landscape requirements. Approval of the deviation would enhance the achievement of the objectives of the plan development and will preserve and promote the general intent to protect public health, <coughs> safety, and welfare as required by the code. At this time, I'd like to introduce Mr. Desario to discuss the landscape betterment plan. Good morning. Uh, Greg Desario, uh, landscape architect with Dave Jones and Associates. Um, what's shown here is, is our... Uh, Before you get to that, yes. tell us a little bit about your credentials. I'm, I'm, I'm a registered landscape architect. I've been practicing in uh, Lee County for 30 plus years, 34, 35 years. Uh, I, I have testified here before and have been recognized as an expert witness in, in landscape in various jurisdictions in Southwest Florida, and I request I be in. Thank you. Thank you. This is the uh, landscape betterment plan that was pre prepared for the zoning, uh, which <coughs> shows all, all the code required plannings plus the enhancements that are proposed. It's kind of hard to see on, on, on the plan here, but some of the enhancements include um, including an east buffer where a previous where a buffer is not would not typically have been required, uh, a buffer along the north again where one typically would not be required along part of it. Uh, we've added a lot of general trees and palms to help accent the building and the site. We added to, uh, uh, ground cover clusters to the uh, US-41 buffer to help provide some, some uh, depth and, and enhancements to, to that required buffer. We've also provided some additional hedge screening around the parking lots uh, where they're not required. The detention areas are to be planted with, with wetland species uh, within the dry detention areas, and we are using 100% native plant material on, on the site. Go ahead, Stacy. You can flip it. We included this plant list at, at this time to show the species that are being used. Um, 
two columns there. With one shows the code code quantities, and then the other one with the betterment quantities, just just to quantify uh, what the betterment is. Uh, with the betterment plannings, we're, we're they are scattered throughout the site. Um, we couldn't just do a betterment along US 41 where we're asked for the deviation, uh, but we're, we're adding 21 trees that are above code, fi roughly 15 palms that are above code, over 150 shrubs and, and three or 300 or so ground covers to, to the plantings on, on the site uh, to, to make an enhanced uh, betterment landscape plan for the project. And I'll be happy to answer any questions at any time. Again, Stacy Hewitt for the record. Um, deviation two is a request to deviate from the land development code <coughs> section 4-1072C1, which requires a minimum lot size for outdoor exercise facilities of five acres to allow a minimum lot size of 1.55 acres. There are existing commercial and industrial properties surrounding the site, and there is this is a unique use that is proposed. There are no residential properties near the project site. The nearest is across US 41, the Leisure Time Mobile Home Park, and approximately 600 feet to the northwest is the Diamond Oaks Village Senior Living Apartments. And both of these are across US 41 from the proposed facility. The exercise facilities are screened from you, from the view of US 41, and we have added buffers and hedgerow abutting the outdoor exercise areas to um, to further screen these areas. One thing, um, and there's also a, a similar use that exists in the city that's on a one half acre site in the Burnwood Business Park. Um, and again, that is a half acre, which is less than the size of the proposed facility. How big is the, uh, is the outdoor exercise area? Um, what are the dimensions of it? They are, I'll have to double check that, but they're what? approximately, um, let's see the site plan demonstrates them. They're approximately, I want to say about 20 feet wide along the south and along the east, and probably about 30 feet wide along the north, adjacent to the outdoor storage. That's the, to that's the total area for the width, yes. Isn't that rather small? I mean, I know a little bit about this uh, business. And I'm, I'm just wondering, you have to segregate the dogs by size and so on. H how do you do that with such a small area? Um, I will, um, if I could, I know that um, the applicant has several facilities that are operating. Um, they're, they've come up with a, a very good um, project as far as how they handle those situations and they do separate them by size and breed and temperament and they, they have deemed this area adequate for what they are doing on the their The question sites. is not whether they've deemed it, it's whether we deem it. Yeah, <laughs> I understand. Um, one moment, please. I'd like to introduce Brian Franco with the applicant. Good morning. Good I'm morning. Brian Franco, and um, based in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, our weather's a little bit better than yours right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with regard to this design, first of all, this design is a fairly new prototype for us. Our typical design is, is uh, larger indoor/outdoor uh, play areas, um, but we have 32 resorts uh, throughout in nine states and of varying sizes. Um, some that we acquired, some that we've built. And so the play yards are vary in size. In some cases we have completely all indoor facilities where we have play areas that we separate by fence, fences, fencing. Um, this particular design is new. We're, one's under construction now in, in, uh, in South Carolina as we speak. <coughs> so with regard to the, the size of the outdoor play, uh, we typically will separate those areas even I into smaller sec sections so we have multiple play yards that we platoon our, our pets, our guests, uh, periodically throughout the day. So, Do you have uh, any others that are as small as this one? Oh, yeah, much smaller. Yes, sir. Yeah, as I mentioned, there's some that we have all indoor, that we have all indoor play. So 
in in some areas in some cases we're limited by you know from a from a zoning perspective we're limited in terms of what we can or can't do um, you know we've we've maximized the outdoor area that we do have but but our, the way we operate we we're, we're constantly moving our pets around the facilities both in indoor play areas as well as resting in their in their uh, suites as well as uh, platooning them outdoors also so there'll be groups of dogs in various play areas for various periods of time Thank so we feel like it's adequate certainly adequate to get the dogs exercise they need through the course of the day yes sir Re relative to your plan the outdoor area on the north is is shown as a potential enclosure not going to be built initially no we're, our plan is to have that as an outdoor play area as well it might have been some of the initial notes on the drawings we're still finalizing the uh, it's labeled potential yeah, it on your plan okay so you are going to build on all <coughs> three sides we're going to have all three sides enclosed play areas so we have uh, so we can maximize the outdoor play yes sir okay well while we're talking about this Mr. Okay. chairman if i Please. could uh, ask about the um, the, the renderings that were presented. Yes, sir. The, um, you look at them. There's all kinds of things happening in this er these areas. If you look look at the renderings, maybe you could pull some of these okay. up. That it, on, on the plan presented, it's just a big blank space, or obviously a place for a run. Oops. <laughs> could you? While she's looking, or while they're looking for that, Mr. Chairman, please. Uh, <coughs> what's the capacity of the of your resort? Well, they vary obviously by size, but I think we have 170 suites in this particular design. And is it just for uh, just dogs or? Mostly, dogs? we we do have a a, a, a cattery. We call it. <laughs> but that that's typically for convenience for our customers usually a, a dozen or so cats that we can house there sounds too much like a cafeteria <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah that's purely for convenience can i ask a question too at this point yes ma'am um, this outdoor exercise area you know this is florida and it's very very hot mm -hmm. is it covered it will be shaded it will be shaded yes okay, ma'am i didn't see that no we we have we have uh 15 resorts in florida and most of our resorts are are in warm climates in the southeast southwest so we're, we're very sensitive about um, about shade. shade we provide splash areas we provide misting fans like an awning shade yeah it'll probably be a kite shade that we we stretch over um, depending on what our prototype is sometimes they're freestanding structures as well with shade but we're sensitive about that and the dogs aren't out there during extreme heat uh, usually inside there is much of. All right, if we could go to uh, what was handed out as at the meeting, yeah, there you go. So the elevations. Uh, uh, that's apparently the rear of the building. Yeah, that's the with east the elevation. opaque fence. Yeah, that's the east elevation. Yes. Yeah, that would be okay, the rear. and, and uh, it's a, it appears a little bit out of scale in depth. Well, it's a that's nice. That's a nice symmetric. Um, um, okay, but elevation. So I'm not sure. I'm not sh sure. I understand your specific question. Well, all right. Let, let's go. Let's go to the uh, ones on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so that does not show up on the plan. The, the, the opaque. It, it shows on the plan that it's the full length of the building. And I don't understand what what's the in, um, fence well, throughout on the, the inside of the the, the perimeter. You're looking at that small rail, r railing picket fence, if you will, through the through yeah, the opaqueness. Through the, uh, uh, I think uh -huh. the opaqueness is or is really just trying to show beyond the the white vinyl fence, which would be our perimeter fence. There are some areas where obviously we have to put condensers and things like that on the ground, so we we screen those from the dog. So that's just representing. Uh, some con con some condensers that are being screened. And and I would note, Mike Fegon for staff, that that is the south elevation and the south elevation on the master concept plan, which is attachment A. The outdoor area doesn't run the full length of the building there. It do it does stop. So that is 
a relatively accurate drawing. Okay. Okay. If I could pick up, uh, maybe you could answer this mm -hmm. uh, on uh, Mr. Donnelly's question about the yeah, parking. Yeah, I'd be glad to. How, how did uh, you arrive at 15 parking spaces? That, that was uh, <coughs> something that was not explained in the package. And Parking is always a, a question with regard to, and we could probably certainly get our civil engineers here. We could we get some feedback from him as well. But you know, so this is this site is a, a little bit smaller than we normally like to have for our resorts, um, and park. But parking is always a question um, in any municipality or county that we that we present in and build in, and. So I've done, we've done a number of studies to, to, to demonstrate what, what our typical uh, parking uh, count is or average parking count across all our resorts. And usually it's around 20 to 24 parking spaces is what we, we have in any given resort. But unlike a lot of areas, you have very specific, almost specific times when people come to drop off their pets in the morning and to pick up their pets That's later, right. in, later in the day. I think that the question that uh, Messrs. Donnelly and Worcester are concerned about is how do you deal with those particular times of day when you're going to have lots of folks there? We hope to the have lots of folks. The rest of the day is fine. <laughs> 15 is fine. Yeah. But you, in this business, you have concentrated times, do you not? We do, but it's a drop-off business. Um, right. We, we don't have a heavy, and let me address the question, if you would, uh, point by point. Um, so with regard to the number of spaces, typically we will have anywhere from 20 to 24, if you look across our footprint. Um, obviously, this, this is slightly short, and we do have some resorts that have parking spaces in this number, uh, similar number. Uh, but so, and then with regard to employees, um, you know, our employee, Full-time employee at any employee number at any given time is 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 for this resort would be somewhere in the the 10 to 15 full-time employees. We will we will hire probably 25 to 30 uh, employees for this, including some part-time for this to to operate this resort on a seven-day basis. Right. Uh, but at any given time, that's about the count that we would have as employees in the in the actual building. Um, with regard to, so, so the parking spaces, um, you know, obviously it's a little bit short of what we I, normally have in our resorts. Um, but, but with regard to any other parking, if you, if you Google Earth any of our locations, uh, even though there's some delay, time delay in Google Earth, you'll see that the parking lot's half empty, usually in any given resort, any given time. Um, so we have a lot of drop- My question was, what about those Specific You're talking times. about the peak time. Address that. The rest of it is. Well, again, we our get. customers typically will come in, they'll park under the portico shell, they'll, they'll deliver their, their pet, and they'll leave. So there really isn't, there's not a lot of queuing necessarily. I mean, it's a, you know, at any given time, if you drive through any resorts at 7 a.m., you'll see cars pulling up, but not, there's no lines out the door or queuing on an adjacent road trying to get in. It's just, it That's just because doesn't they have that. adequate parking. The question is whether they're, or not they're, they're, this they're is actually not parking. They're actually not parking. They're dropping off. They're not parking. They're, they're, they're pulling up to our port of share. They're dropping off and they're leaving. So they don't come in and have questions or have a discussion or pay you or whatever they want to well, do. Well, if they do, I mean, give I, you their again, there's, there's most of the parking spaces are taken by our employees. Our customers very rarely park in a parking space. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying they don't, but with regard to the concern about uh, not having adequate parking. Now, with regard to the other part of the question was the billboard. Um, you know, we, we, we did not, in our design, obviously, take the billboard out. Um, I think we wanted to get through a process. Uh, I, I don't think anybody necessarily likes billboards. The fact that this billboard takes up a lot of space in our lot our, our intent is to um, is to eliminate that billboard so that we could uh, one get rid of it and two add parking to it uh, but in the it, at this stage we my direction to them was let's see what we can do with the billboard still there because we do have a lease that we have to, to work through as well on that billboard uh, continuing on in your application you also show a clinic 
Yes, sir. As a part of the, mm -hmm. uh, is that like a veterinarian clinic where people would be, have uh, work done uh, while, yeah, and, and, while and they wait? Like, uh, 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 not necessarily. Our clinics are really s built to serve our existing customer base. So not that we wouldn't take uh, folks from the outside that aren't our customers, our boarding customers, but primarily um, if there's an issue with the dog, Many times the owners are not there. The dog's there. They're boarding. They may be away. We'll call the owner if there's an issue, and we'll perform whatever needs they have. So it's not a it's not a traditional animal hospital, if you will. It's more of a wellness clinic, is what it is. And again, that's primarily there to serve our existing customers. Okay, picking up what Ch uh, Chairman Curlander pointed out uh, on your employees, you you have first of all. <coughs> A resident that's there full time. Right. At, okay. So additionally, you said you had 15 employees. Uh, what I would say at a facility range? like that, at any given time, there there may be 10 to 15 employees in the building working the building. Is what where, I said. Where are they going to park? On site. So your customer parking is now down to five spaces if there's 10 employees plus if there's four spaces. It appears to me that you it's obvious that you're short on parking. And uh, if that is, in fact, a problem when this is built, the answer is to park on the street. If I'm dropping my dog off and there's not room and it's stacked up in the queuing line underneath the photo share, uh, I may have to park out in the street, and it, it looks like that's almost built into this plan. Well, I, 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 can't, I can't ask you to drive to Jacksonville and, and actually watch witness. We, we've just built a much larger indoor-outdoor facility, which is a, our flagship prototype, and any given time, the, the parking lot is half empty. So Well, I, that, that's I, understanding. You, get, you go to any shopping center at nighttime, there's nobody there, but, that, but it's during the peak periods that is what the parking requirements try to uh, pick up enough spaces for. Well, I, again, I, I, looking at the billboard, if we, if we picked up two additional sp its spaces, that certainly would, would, would benefit and augment what we have. But I, I, I'm, tell, I, I'm suggesting that we have adequate parking to, to, uh, to deal both with our employees as well as our customers. It's Mr. Figon. Yes, uh, I'll just go ahead and I, I don't want to speak for the applicant. That's not the job of staff. But what I will say is that no part of the request is requesting deviations for the parking requirements that are in the land development code. So they would have to meet the parking requirements of the land development code for these specific animal uses. And just to give you an example, you know, a lot of the um, parking requirements are based on the square footages of the building animal uses aren't treated that way. So for an example, in our land development code for kenneling, it's a minimum requirement of five spaces. Doesn't matter the square footage, minimum requirement of five spaces. I think probably one of the reasons why they did that is, going back to what the applicant was saying, a lot of times it's just dropping off. So you're not there spending all day with your animals. You're, you're going in, you're dropping them off, you're taking the 30 seconds to pay if you need to pay right then and there, you jump back in your car and you go. So I, I will just reiterate that they are not requesting any deviations for parking with their projects, so they will need to meet all of the required parking at time of uh, development order, but that for animal uses, it's not based on square footage. Thank you, Mike. Question. <coughs> I understand. That makes sense what you're saying, and I, I imagine there's some long-term boarding and there's short-term boarding or daycare, as you call it. Correct. Uh, what is the percentage uh, in this type of situation? How many are short-term, just there for the day? That's where the traffic would be building. Uh, how many are there for typically for long-term boarding? Well, uh, I mean, if you look at from a revenue standpoint, 80% of our revenue is derived from boarding, long-term boarding. So our day camp business is probably 15% of that uh, from, a, from a numbers uh, we may have uh, in this facility anywhere from 50 to 75 dogs in day camp that would be typically dropped off. So that's 50 to 75 trips through the facility, vehicles trips, I'm thinking. 
correct, unless there's multiple oh, dogs. There and could be some yeah, multiple, which yeah. there are. Yeah. But in, in, rare, in rare cases, would, would a customer park to bring their pets? <coughs> they would typically drive up to the Porta Cachere, drop them off, and then leave. Porta Cachere to the entrance. Sorry. <laughs> um, and drop off. So it's, it's, it's just a, it's a flow, and, and um, you know, again, they're not typically parking. You, you, if you if you saw it, I'm, it sounds like you're familiar with our with our business. But if you saw it, you would see that it 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 just cycles through. And the nice thing about this design in, in engaging the service road, there's an opportunity to exit in a couple of different ways as well, because it's a, a circular drive. So that really helps facilitate any any kind of traffic flow there that might exist or be caused by in those prime times. Any other thought? questions? I have just a question. This is sort of a bizarre one, but um, if this were a human facility, we'd be asking about adequate bathroom facilities, but of course it's a dog facility. And I guess I just never thought of this before, but you talk in your presentation about how you will clean the outdoor yard regularly and bag these in large, right. mm -hmm. what's left in large black bags, which I assume go to the trash. Is right. the trash company here in our area aware that they're going to be picking up large dumpsters of excrement every day and oh, they are they okay a lot. with that? I mean, I, I just. We've never had any issue with that. They, they pick up a lot worse, ma'am, <laughs> in those dumpsters, but yeah. So, so that is just, that is the normal way you would deal with dog excrement. The, the applicant would coordinate with Lee County solid waste on a pickup schedule and okay. based on the type of business that it is helps to determine the pickup schedule. So yes, they are aware of what they're walking into, so to speak. Well, if I ask that because I try to imagine a uh, camper coming forward and deciding what we're going to do is empty into a large plastic bag and throwing it in the trash. I don't think that would be allowed. So I found that sort of odd that that was the... No, it's so there, 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 in this There's regard, no treatment of it. It just goes to the, no. in our case, burnt, burnt up, I see. In your indoor facility, mm -hmm. how is the waste disposed of? The same way. It's all There's solids, no, uh, solids uh, or sewers or anything. Or well, I mean, our indoor facility are tied to our the sanitary system, correct? But all the solids are picked up, whether it's outside or inside. I have okay. a question, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> what about lighting for the for the for your, this development? How high and how much lighting will you have? In in, in our facility. Well, we, we have an incredible amount. We have an incredible <laughs> amount of lighting, both in inside and out, for a variety of reasons. I think security is is one of the main reasons. Um, but just having brightness in in the facility, I think, is healthy for the for the pets. Um, you know, the ability to to see and, and be able to clean <coughs> adequately. So we have a lot of lighting. We invest a lot in our lighting. The is there any, Mr. Figon? Is there any concern? of the lighting affecting neighboring areas? Having not seen a lighting plan, I would just note that the city does have a dark skies ordinance that prevents uh, the light from um, going shining upward or yeah. bleeding onto neighboring properties, and they are not requesting any deviations from that, so they would have to meet it. The light would essentially need to it would be controlled by the, the lumens. Um, it would be a targeted lighting approach. Yes, it would light up the site, but we do have parameters in the code to help prevent bleed over onto neighboring properties, and they would they would have to meet that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions of me? No. I mean, I'll be here, so if there are. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. So we've covered a lot of ground, so you don't have to go over that ground anymore. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me get back to the deviations. Um, returning back to deviation two, um, we have covered a lot of this, but this this deviation for the site area, again, approval of this deviation would enhance the achievement of the objectives of the plan development and will preserve and promote the general intent to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Deviation three is from Land Development Code Section 4-1072C2, 
which requires a minimum setback of 200 feet from any outdoor exercise facility to an abutting lot under separate ownership or a street right of way to allow a minimum setback of five feet to the north to the outdoor storage area, 30 feet to the east, and 18 feet to Commerce Drive. Again, uh, similar use exists on a half acre site in the Burnwood Business Park, less than 200 feet from an abutting lot, and there are no residential properties within the area. Um, this use, this code actually existed in the Lee County regulations prior to being adopted in the city and we did um, just work on a, the same product in <coughs> Lee County where it was an existing plan development and because of the screening the opaque fences and the landscaping being pro provided Lee County actually administratively approved these deviations because the 200 foot setback is actually not requiring any screening that could be a chain link fence um, in just open areas so I just want to point that out that we are um, providing opaque fencing and buffering to <coughs> alleviate any offsite impacts. Um, approval of this deviation would in, again enhance the achievements of the plan development and protect the public health, safety, and welfare. At this time, I'd like to introduce Brent Addison to discuss the stormwater features of the site. Good morning, everyone. Brent Addison for the record. <coughs> I have. I have um, presented in this um, venue before and have been uh, uh, received as an expert witness. Uh, so if there's, if you have any questions for me. What's your background? Tell us a little bit about it. I have been in, uh, practicing in, in Lee County for uh, 14 years. I'm a licensed red, uh, registered professional engineer and uh, was previously 10 years in Bonita um, with uh, another company. So. Proceed. Thank you. Um, so for the site, we're talking about 1.55 acres. Um, the site is located in the uh, Spring Creek watershed um, that was designated in the Lee County, South Lee County watershed study. Um, right now there is no existing ERP permit on the site uh, from the Water Management District. Um, there is an existing, uh, the existing drainage uh, from reviewing the topographic information um, in the areas, uh, in the surrounding areas of the property. This property currently drains into the ditch that's located on Commerce Drive and then runs east into the Bonita Industrial Park um, where it eventually gets into the lake at the back of the Id Bonita Industrial Park and then circles back around and goes underneath 41, um, eventually going in, obviously, into uh, Stero Bay. Um, the uh, our treatment in this case is proposed dry detention um, so you'll see in the site plan if you can flip over um, there's dry detention areas kind of scattered through the site um, kind of sprinkled in through the site for one to be more efficient with our piping networks um, and to catch whatever's falling off the parking lot there uh, ultimately they'll uh, this is the most upstream one. They circle around the property, back down, and into a control structure, which goes into the existing Commerce Drive swale, which is consistent with the existing drainage that we're proposing. Um, we uh, have provided water. Uh, the water quality was analyzed for the site, where we analyzed for the one inch or the two and a half times the impervious um, per the Water Management District rules and the one inch was the ruling factor. We're providing an additional 50%, the inch and a half, which I believe is consistent with your comprehensive plan for this, um, for this site. Um, and we will be applying, if, uh, let's go back to the other site. Um, we have submitted to FDOT because we abut their right of way for a drainage exception because we're not draining to their right of way. That is currently under review and because of the size of the project it's less than 10 acres or two acres impervious we'll be submitting uh, self-certification to south florida um, at, at construction time and this is also be also going to be reviewed through your staff um, under the development order process 
So with that, I'll take any other questions. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, I notice you have your dry detention areas around the front of it, but what you say in your plan is that on a regular basis you'll be washing off all that um, exercise area for the dogs, and that has almost nowhere for it to go except right into the drainage ditch. And I'm concerned in terms of environmental um, issues about that. So how do, you, how do you plan to handle that? That's not going to be the cleanest of water, I wouldn't think, as you rinse off that ground. So not shown in this plan. There's, there's going to be a system of under drains in the area. In those, this, uh, the ac area is actually um, AstroTurf, I believe. It's a, um, not grass. It's going to be synthetic. So um, under that, there's going to be a system of drains that will accept that. <coughs> Um, and then uh, it does go into the dry detention system, which is going to be treating that. So you're moving it back west before it goes. I mean, it's going to drain into the same. It's it's going to it has to be maintained on our site as yeah. as any other runoff does okay. from the rain or whatever. And it's going to go into the dry detention system, which is really one of the more efficient ways we have of treating stormwater. Mm -hmm. So it's going to either percolate through the soil or it's going to be held back through this control structure and it'll be it'll only be able to go out at certain but it has to actually go through a drainage bed through some some rock and some gravel that goes down so it's there's there's a lot of opportunities there's for no it to protect indication what that is here though so there's no indication of what that process is here i didn't miss that did i or maybe N no I it's that's pretty specific in the yeah. that's in the details okay. that we would be that's going to be reviewed by staff as well um in the development order so um, again, it's, it cannot run directly off-site into the Commerce, uh, Commerce Road ditch without being treated um, or held back. Sure. Mr. Worcester. I have an additional question. Can I just okay. describe the system a little bit more detail? You don't have a, a section cut, if you will. Of the, so this, this is, again, another question that we're often asked wherever we are. Um, and we've, has, we've got several resorts in Florida, and um, there's always a concern about that. So we've really developed a, a, a process, a system where it's roughly eight inches of, as Brent mentioned, the top surface is a, a uh, astroturf, which has holes in it so, so it can drain. And then there's, a, there's a, about an inch of fine, fine rock and then below that, 57 stones. So there's about an eight inch, eight to nine inch layer, if you will, filtration system. And then embedded in that is a perforated pipe system that ties to the storm that's socked. So by the time any water gets to that system, it's, it's pretty diluted at the, that point. And of course, there's no solids that, that work their way down. Those are all scooped. Uh, so it's a, it's a system that we've worked on for, for concern about environment and cleanliness and, and trying to mitigate for odor and things like that. So it, it, we think it works pretty well. We've put thousands of square feet in place in the last couple of years, so it seems like it works very well. And many of the major water districts, and Florida's probably one of the most stringent, uh, and we've had no issue, no questions with regard to securing permits from them. So hopefully that, it, that gives you a little bit more. But those are in the detailed engineering drawings, that, that section that Brent just described. Mr. Worcester. Uh, going back to your dry detention, just an observation on the dry detention that shows up on the southwest corner of the, of the building. Right there? Yeah, right. Uh, did you consider putting in uh, underground storage? that would take big, big pipes covering it and then allowing that possibly for more parking or even move your dumpsters over there and pick up parking spaces there. And what, I, what I'm doing is just taking your dry storage and putting it in pipes underground, which is a common way to pick up more surface area in, in development. It, was that ever considered? It was not. Um, I'd, I'd have to look at the section of that and see if, if, if you were to try to do parking over that. Typically what we run into in Southwest Florida is enough vertical storage over what would be your control elevation mm -hmm. and then you have to get up to what would be a dry detention elevation and then you have to have be able to fit the, 
whatever your whatever your system is. So I would say we did not consider it. Uh, we could look at that, uh, but I don't know that we have the vertical movement. Yeah, that that's a key. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But but it, if it would work, it would be another place to pick up uh, ground area for parking. We'll we'll take that take a look at that. Thank you. Can I ask another question to sure. get the idea of where I'm coming from? Was this property, um, and I have no idea, in the last year when we had the two large water events, Irma and the flooding before that, was this property something that was flooded or was it okay? It, it was relatively wet, but one of the reasons why is because right now if you go out there, it's essentially bermed on all four sides. So the water so really has way. nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. um, because it's bermed on all four sides, so it almost creates like a pooling effect. So actually the fact that they would be fixing that by putting in drainage should actually help with the natural historic flow from west to east. What does one do um, if there are flooding concerns with a hotel or whatever we call these facilities filled with dogs? Do you send them back to their owner or put them somewhere else? What do you do? I mean, is, we would re require Hey. Evacuation plan if it were people, but what about dogs? Let me say one thing, and then you can. So, so one thing we do design to is we have to meet certain requirements. With, you know, um, storm events. So, I'll let him speak to the actual plan to do that. But the idea is we treat this just like any other building, a house. It's got to meet the uh, you know the same requirements for flood protection. Well, that's a great question, and uh, we've obviously had some events in the last <laughs> two or three right. years we've all had to uh, deal with, um, and with the the amount of um, resorts we have in Florida, in fact, the last Irma, I guess it was, it really impacted every one of our resorts, so uh, a little bit nervous at that point, but we do have a plan. The good thing about hurricanes is you see them coming, and you can plan for them, uh, and, and we do that. We've, we've sort of uh, refined that plan, and in the event that you know, we, we, there's going to be a storm event in this region, then we will, we will start contacting our owners uh, well ahead of time to start, once we make the decision, once we get a strong sense from, from Weather Channel that, you know, it's going to hit in this region, we'll, we'll start that process of, of calling our owners. In some cases, our owners are out of the country. Why in which case we may end up with a handful of pets that we have to relocate. So we have several opportunities throughout the state to evacuate. We had to evacuate, um, I, guess, I guess it was Irma, we couldn't decide whether it was going to hit on the east, so east coast or the west coast. So we had moved dogs a couple times <laughs> and ultimately moved them all north into the Gainesville area. Um, but, we, but we have evacuated pets and we're pretty good at it right now having had to go through it the last couple couple years so Maybe we, we we'll get well ahead of that uh problem uh, <coughs> and make those plans thank you any further questions at this time i would like to address consistency with the comprehensive plan um, this project is consistent with policy 1.1.14 for the general commercial future land use designation. This is infill development with an appropriate use to serve the needs of the residents within the city. Residential uses are limited to the caretaker's residence on site and the maximum height is proposed not to exceed 30 feet. The proposed floor area ratio for the site is 0.26 as a maximum of 17,400 square feet are proposed, which is consistent. Um, <coughs> the floor area ratios would allow on the site up to 81,021 square feet. So the proposal is consistent with policy 1.1.14. It's consistent with policy 1.1.16, the industrial future land use category. Again, this is infill development with an appropriate heavy commercial use to serve the needs of the residents within the city. Residentials limited to the caretaker's residence. The height is limited to 30 feet and the floor area ratio is consistent. It's consistent with objective 1.11, policy 1.11.1. Bonita Springs Utilities has available capacity to serve the site for both water and sewer. Solid waste capacity is available to service the site. 
Access to the site will be provided via connection onto Commerce Drive to the south and a connection to the existing frontage road to the north for vehicles, pedestrians, and bicycles. There is appropriate stormwater management areas and the project is consistent with these, this objective and policy. The request meets the required findings found in Land Development Code Section 4-131D3. It is compliant with the Bonita Plan, the Land Development Code, along with the approved deviations. The request will meet or exceed all performance and locational standards with the approval of the requested deviations. The request is consistent with the intensities and general uses set forth in the Bonita Plan. The request is compatible with the existing or planned uses in the area, and it will not place an undue burden upon existing transportation or planned infrastructure facilities and will be served by streets with the capacity to carry the traffic generated by the request. The request will not adversely affect environmentally critical areas or natural resources as there are none on the site. The proposed mix of you of uses is appropriate at the subject location. The recommended conditions to the plan included in the staff report provide sufficient safeguards and are reasonably related to the request. The deviations requested enhance the achievements of the objectives of the plan development and preserve and promote the general intent to protect the public health, safety, and warfare. There are public facilities adequate and available to service the proposed use. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Mr. Figon. I will try not to duplicate too much of what Mrs. Hewitt already went over. That would be appreciated. I, I, I understand that very much so. Um, oh, sure. Thank you. Okay, so we'll just skip right to some fun stuff. We, we know what the request is. We're aware that it's two contiguous parcels, two separate addresses, two separate strap numbers that are to come together to make this project and that we're recommending approval. We're aware of the location of where it is in the city. Um, I think it is important to reiterate, though, that this piece does embut the production circle industrial park area. Uh, the nearest residential is on the other side of US 41, which is leisure time to the south, and Diamond Oaks to the north. And as far as that frontage road goes, one, once the applicant builds their portion, you can essentially get all the way from Angelina's down to Commerce Drive without having to go on to US 41. It's almost a quarter mile stretch. Um, so that's one of the reasons why staff supported the landscape betterment plan, which instead of putting a frontage row there would have required a 20 foot wide landscape buffer. Uh, the connectivity seemed to be uh, at, a, at a premium and a need within the city, of course. And it is important to note that they are still going to plant along that US 41 right of way. It's just not going to be a 20 foot wide buffer. That way they have room for the frontage road. Future land use and zoning we already went over. Surrounding property we already discussed. You have open storage, marble restoration, right-of-ways, Congo River Golf, um, all in the surrounding areas. The master concept plan was already discussed. One thing I would point out on the master concept plan is that uh, there is an allowance in certain areas for your buffers to overlap in your detention areas. And in this case, they did not do that, uh, which is actually more preferred from the staff standpoint in terms of not planting anything in your detention areas, you allow them to have maximum capacity. Uh, so they do, they do have the buffers completely separate from the proposed detention areas, which is important. The renderings we already looked at. The proposed uses we already discussed. There were no concerns with the uses from the staff perspective. It all seems to be in line with the type of business that's being run. Uh, there was a condition placed on the caretaker's residence that it needs to be located completely within the existing building. And in fact, we had them called out on the master concept plan uh, as the caretaker's residence being within that existing building. 
the development regulations, we did talk about the change of the maximum building height going from 35 feet down to 30. Um, that's actually somewhat related to the setback requirements for planned developments. Uh, within planned developments, you do have standard perimeter setback requirements, and it's sort of like a, it's a worse, uh, it's a, it's a whichever is more restrictive type of scenario. And the way it's worded in the code is that it, it can be 15 feet or at least half the height of the proposed building, whichever is more restrictive. Uh, so by dropping it down to 30 feet, that means they have to meet the 15-foot perimeter setback, which is required by code. So it was, it was a good way to, to balance that out. So that's why that change was requested by staff and the applicant agreed. Neighborhood compatibility, we already discussed in terms of what's around. You do have residential more than 600 feet away. Um, there are, the uses themselves are not more intense than the existing uses in the surrounding area, which are everything from marble restoration to light manufacturing to open storage to landscape businesses all in the surrounding area. <coughs> the environmental considerations we already went over. You do have attachment B, which is a copy of the landscape betterment plan being proposed. A lot of the vegetation is invasive and exotic anyway, would need to be removed as required. Uh, there were no environment, environmentally sensitive lands found or species on site, and that was verified by staff. We already discussed the landscape betterment plan. You can see where they still are showing a row of plantings adjacent to US 41, so they are still going to be providing uh, some buffering there in addition to building the frontage road. Traffic considerations, we already discussed that. You do have a full-blown TIS in your packet. Uh, from the traffic engineer who did that. It was reviewed by the Florida Department of Transportation and the city of Bonita Springs, and it did not cross the threshold of being, quote unquote, uh, having a significant impact on the capacity of the servicing roadways. The way we uh, determine significant impact is if it uh, is two to three percent of the service level capacity of that road. Um, that's actually more restrictive than uh, the basic traffic manual, which I think is 5%. So City of New Springs actually has a higher threshold and a higher standard to deal with traffic, and it, it didn't even trip those standards. Stormwater and drainage, we already discussed about um, the flow, the on-site detention areas, the, the, uh, the introduction of inlets and outfalls, and it is an attachment, attachment D in, in, your, in your packet. And that's, that's a little bit more of what it looks like with all the, the detention areas, the inlets, the outfalls, and the connections that go from west to east. For the comp plan, uh, the, the city is in agreement with what, um, or the staff is in agreement with what uh, the applicant had provided as far as consistency with the future land use elements. It does have water and sewer availability on site. Uh, the solid waste capacity with the on-site dumpster. It does have multiple modes of access and even more access once this frontage road gets built. It is able to uh, accommodate cars, bicycles, and pedestrians, and that is an important point that staff did want to hit home as being part of the US 41 overlay, being able to accommodate varying types of traffic, and they are consistent with that by providing uh, the, the, the driveways for the actual cars and uh, the multimodal sidewalks. The deviations that were requested, uh, yes, there were three of them. The first one has to do with the landscape betterment plan and the deviation of the 20-foot required buffer uh, to allow that access road to be built, or the frontage road, should I say. The second one having to do with the, uh, the size and acreage for an outdoor exercise facility. And the third one tying right into that has to do with the setback for an outdoor exercise facility. It is important to note that there is no residential uses within uh, the 200 foot requirement for deviation three. And I would just go ahead and stress one more time that when you look at the site plan, um, I'll go ahead and pull it up actually on the aerial so it's a little bit more clear. Um, the outdoor area is going to be where my pointer is so it is not geared towards the closest residential areas it's 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 geared towards the industrial park and it is going to be screened uh, with an opaque fence and buffered and covered and shielded Covered 
those. So with that, we do have the findings uh, that are required to be reviewed, and we do have the determination from the staff perspective that it has demonstrated compliance with the Bonita plan. Um, unless modified by the deviation, the request is meeting the performance and locational standards required by code. Um, there really isn't residential density outside of the, the caretaker's residence to help provide that, that on-site service for the animals. Um, so it, it, there's no risk of, of not meeting density calculations or exceeding the density, the maximum density as set forth in the comp plan. Uh, it is compatible with the existing or planned uses in the surrounding area. It is no more or less intense than anything that's already there. Um, it will not place an undue burden upon existing transportation as the traffic numbers have indicated. There are no critical areas on site, therefore none are adversely impacted if you were to approve this project. And then you also have the additional criteria for planned development uh, rezonings. Um, the, the mix of uses is appropriate at the subject location from the staff opinion. Uh, the conditions that we have in place are there to provide uh, a better quality project and to provide safeguards for the general public for their health and well-being. <coughs> and the conditions are reasonably related to the impact of the project as a result. And they do have public facilities available to serve the proposed project site. So with that in mind, staff is recommending approval of the project overall with the conditions. These are the conditions that are listed in the staff report. I think one thing we may want to discuss here uh, in light of uh, Mr. Worcester's suggestion uh, with regards to perhaps a slight drainage redesign to facilitate more parking, um, if perhaps there could be a condition added to help facilitate that to allow that to occur. I, I was surprised that uh, with regard to the billboard, mm -hmm. I mean, how many spots would that give you? Maybe two. That's all? Yeah. Surprising. But two is 15% better sure. than? Just the stand. Sure. The, the stand for the posts. Right. Yeah. And there are some legal loopholes to jump through, obviously, with the removal of a billboard and things like that. So I, I, I don't. Uh, Derek could probably speak to that a little bit more let's just not get into that yeah let's so <laughs> you know so it what, what when you say let's not get into it well, is you this, mean yeah talking about it's removal of the billboard well I mean if we're so if I, if I get if I gather what the testimony was and what the, the findings are the project already significantly exceeds the parking requirements for this type of use correct can and I that Okay. Well, I mean, there there could be there the code sets boarding. It doesn't obviously boarding is contingent on the number of employees. That would be a, an obvious situation. If there's 25 employees, well, where are they all going to park if there's only 15 spots? I mean, that, that so to say that it exceeds the standard of five is still context dependent. Um, and then if we are in a situation where we're next looking at redesigning the site and one situation is we can address the stormwater to free up some additional parking but capacity for stormwater is not affected by that adjustment that would be the pre preferable situation to address the billboard on the fly and just say well let's look at removing the billboard I don't know the contractual relationships of the billboard who the leaseholder is who the owner is there are other considerations to be applied I think it's difficult to say we make a decision on the billboard like that that's just something that would have to be analyzed further. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying, well, the statute requires five, and uh, even though there's 15 employees going to be there taking all the spots, mm -hmm. uh, and that, of course, leads to the conclusion that none of the customers are going to park. In that, in that scenario, and, 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 right. And, and that satisfies you? No, no, no. That, my, 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 my point is, if there are, the, the code requirement is five, a minimum of five. It doesn't give any indication as to the size of the building, number of employees. And the fact that this is a planned development application, I think that it's entirely context-based 
analysis of that five parking spot requirement. If there are 15 employees and they're going to be all at the location at the same time, then the standard of five is not adequate. That's right. And, and staff doesn't disagree with that. Um, you know, they obviously one of the things that we look at aside from the bare bones parking code as far as numbers are concerned is site functionality. If the site's not going to function because of the lack of parking, then that's something that's going to be discussed and considered and would need to be modified significantly to, to make sure that that's the case. Um, when I looked at this from the, the code perspective, yes, the code language for parking for animal uses is done a little bit differently than other commercial uses, and they were exceeding that uh, by three times the required amount in, in the code, per se. But again, site functionality is always something that is looked at throughout the entire process and it's not going to be ignored. And again, I would just reiterate that since they are not requesting any deviations for parking requirements, which can include site functionality, it, it, it's going to be looked at. It's going to be looked at further. It has to be. Did you want to say something? I just wanted to add that he did mention it would be 10 to 15. And if it was at the 10 parking spaces, then there still would be those five additional parking spaces available. Thank you. Thank you. Continue, Mr. Figo. Sure. So the Mike. conditions um, Mike. are shown on the slide sure. here. Yep. Yeah, that, please. That's okay. Let, let him finish. Okay. I was just going to we'll, we'll, stay we'll, on the we'll, subject. We'll, 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 we'll get to you. We'll call you. Okay. Thank you. So we do have the schedule of uses and the, and the property development regs written into the conditions of approval with the little stipulation of the max height changing from 35 feet down to 30, requiring the caretaker's residence to be in the existing building. Uh, it needs to meet or exceed the multimodal complete streets requirements of LDC Chapter 3, which based on the master concept plan it does. Uh, it has to provide compliance with the landscape betterment plan, <coughs> attachment B in your packet. The outdoor areas are permitted for an equal or lesser footprint than what is shown on the MCP. Uh, so they can build up to the threshold shown on the MCP, but no more unless they come back in for a modification, which would have to come back before you. Uh, we are going to require the lots to be combined uh, as one unified parcel before the project can be commenced. Uh, they are gonna re we are going to require roof gutters for rainwater collection to better uh, serve the property and to better uh, help direct the water to the appropriate areas on site. Uh, and obviously the detailed drainage analysis and the detailed stormwater analysis is going to be due at time of uh, development order and the noise ordinance does remain in full force and effect. Those were the conditions that, that staff is attributing to this particular project. And with that, I, I have nothing else to add if you have any questions or comments of staff for the applicant. Did you uh, want to say something in rebuttal there? Yes, Brent, Brent Addison for the record. Um, and speaking with the client and listening to um, the board, um, we would like to uh, have the flexibility because the site, the master concept plan is so specific, the one that we've provided, uh, we'd like to have the flexibility to look into the removal of the billboard and to look into the closed drainage uh, system to uh, in order to obtain more parking so I don't know the wording on the condition but in order to avoid to give staff the flexibility to allow us to do that um, outside of this and to continue we'd like to entertain a, a condition that allows that and that way we, we could proceed and try to meet your needs or your desires for that thank you Thanks. mr. Rooney um, how uh, would we, based upon what was just said by the applicant, how would uh, we uh, try to enforce that in some way? Uh, the solution, uh, Mike and I were just speaking, I think the solution would be to add a condition that two addition, at least two additional parking spaces will be provided and it will be done so either through removal of the billboard or a redesign of the stormwater management system. Is the applicant okay with that? Yes, sir. Okay. So that will be condition number 12. Okay. 
Is there any further testimony? From the board. I'd like to ask just one question, and this is, I have no expertise in this area, but I know this road because I live across the street in Pelican Landing from mm -hmm. here. Um, and at the time that people are going to be dropping off and picking up dogs, that's a pretty busy highway in season. Is there only way to turn south out of this parking lot across traffic? Or does that back, I couldn't figure out exactly how that back road that you were describing, does it get you somewhere where there's a light? Like um, either Old 41 or, or Coconut so Road sure. or something? No, it, it, it. So you would have to probably turn right to turn left is Correct. basically what you'd have to do. Okay. So I'll, I'll add to the condition that we'll have to go to uh, an updated master concept plan reflecting the change will be provided as well. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything further from the board? Okay. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we approve this based upon the conditions as amended. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Discussion? Did you want to do public comment? Before yeah, before we vote. vote. Okay. 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 Is there any discussion? So we'll hold the, our vote here. Uh, anybody from the public would like to speak? Speak at this time, please. Hearing no one, the question is called. Call the roll, please. Yes. Roger Brunswick? Yes. Barbara Craig? Yes. Chairman Colander? Yes. James Worcester? Yes. Okay. So that, uh, that concludes the case. Thank I want to thank you for your presentation. I, I, I found the materials you submitted were extraordinarily helpful, uh, in particular this. Larger with the larger thing. No. Thank you. It's very helpful. You did a very good job on that. Uh, I want to congratulate you. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to echo those thoughts. This is uh, one, one of the best presentations as far as information that th this board's received in a long time. And I it, think, Mr. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman, and to re echo, the landscape plan uh, was especially appealing. Um, so very complete. I hope it looks this good when it's completed. Good luck with your project. Thank, Thank you. you. And I want to add my voice to that too, and I think it, it shows what we're trying to accomplish in the revision to the procedures. And this, I, I want to congratulate the staff too for presenting this in a way that allows us to really see what the project <coughs> is going to do and have our questions answered effectively. So thank you guys, it really worked. Thank you. Okay, so we, uh, before we adjourn, we have one more item on the agenda, and that is uh, item number seven. Uh, Jackie. Good morning, Chairman and Zoning Board members. Good morning. This, good morning. It's so nice good to, to see, see you, you all. <laughs> <laughs> the city clerk has brought to our attention that on June 18th, which is your normally scheduled Zoning Board meeting, it is in fact also the city council's budget meeting. So there is a conflict with this room. <laughs> you know, so we wanted to go ahead and discuss if there's alternate dates that we can consider. I do understand that many of you could be traveling during the summer, so we wanted to go ahead and vet those dates. I don't know if we'll have cases scheduled yet because it's still early in the process, but if you would mind just looking at, um, we thought maybe June 11th or June 25th could be an option. It's also a Tuesday, just a week prior or a week, a week after. So this doesn't affect what we're going to do tomorrow? No, no, sir. This is just your regularly your regularly scheduled zoning board public hearing dates. If we have cases that are available and ready to be heard, either date works fine for me. Eleven or twenty-five. So, if you want, if you know, if you have access to your calendars now, would like to let me know, or just email the clerk, and we can go ahead and so set up that alternate date. So, the two dates that you're proposing are. Tuesday, June 11th, or Tuesday, June 25th? 
June 25th, I have a conflict on the 11th. The 11th? I do, yeah. Just, just for information, is there going to be an April meeting? Yes, sir, which will bring me up to my, my next oh, okay. item, too. But we'll, we'll go ahead and, and send out some additional notification just to see if June 11th would work. If it does not, we'll... It doesn't we'll, work for me. Oh, it doesn't work for you, or the 25th. Either just, day works, but 25th is better for 25th me. is better for everyone? 11th is You'll no get back problem. to me in Sturgeon, sir, please. We need Larry. Okay, so um, vice chairman going to be in Minnesota then? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it, get, it gets God hot. God will June. get you for that one. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and tentatively um, go with June 25th, and I'll have the clerk reach out to Mr. Donnelly and, and Mr. Wynn. Um, we do have an April meeting. We will have some cases, and I did want to take the opportunity to introduce one of our new planners, Mary Zizzo, in the back. Mm -hmm. Zizzo, Z-I-Z-Z-O. Um, she's been with our office for over a year. Uh, she's a very talented young lady. She's been um, even with our department prior to that, um, and then she had left to go to law school, and she has completed that, and she decided she we'll wanted to. We'll forgive her for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's decided to try land use planning, um, so we're very honored to have her. She's, she's a great asset to our team, um, so she will be presenting one of her cases um, in April. Um, Mary also has experience with interning with the city attorney's office. She did that a few years ago. So um, she's not a stranger to the podium. Um, so I just wanted to take that opportunity for you to meet her before she presents in April. Okay, great. Do, do you know uh, which cases are going to be before us in April? It's Is it a more variance. than one? I, there's just one. Okay. So it's a variance, um, I believe, for a pool house setback so hopefully relatively um short and okay. to the point yes uh, we have a new secretary now uh, 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 are you our permanent secretary uh, now for, for, yes it, for, it's looking that way so yes michelle michelle thank you michelle nice to meet you all. Thank welcome you. aboard thank you thank you roger is there anything else uh to come before the board. Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. Second. The meeting's adjourned. Thank you.